So this is the OnePlus 11. I've had this for more than one month. And this is my long-term review, my thoughts and opinions about this device. So without further delay, let's dive right in. Starting off with design of the OnePlus 11. It's a great looking phone. Overall, I like it, feels really good in the hand. But the one thing is, it's a little too slippery. So I tend to use a case with the OnePlus 11. Now, I'm really happy that the alert slider is here. They briefly removed it with the OnePlus 10T, but they brought it back and I hope they keep it. Please don't remove it. And I hope other companies bring an alert slider to their phones because it's super useful. Like, I absolutely love the alert slider. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the camera setup right here, and it doesn't seamlessly blend into the side of the phone. They're two separate pieces, if you can see real closely, but that's just something, I mean, it's nitpicking at this point that they're not, it's not one seamless piece, but I just, I don't like this camera cutout right here. It just looks like, I don't know, maybe like a last minute thing where they just decide to put it on the top left of the phone. Now, like I said, this does fit really snug in the hand. And I also love that the display is less curved than previous years, which is a good thing. And I hope they actually go full flat display for maybe the OnePlus 12. Now, I wish the front facing camera was placed in the center of the display rather than the left corner. Again, these are things that I, I've noticed in the past month of using uh, the OnePlus 11 and stuff that I'm nitpicking at. Now, display though. It's really good. It's bright and vivid. It's great for watching content and playing games like Call of Duty. And just taking a look at this amazing wallpaper. It's my latest wallpaper pack, Nebula. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below if you want to check it out and support the channel. But overall, like I like the design. It's a it's one plus. I think when you see this now, you know that hey, that is a one plus. The, the one plus logo is in their center, like it has been for the past couple of years. And overall, it feels really good. Um, I kind of wish there was less of a chin on the bottom, but they might be able to fix that with next year, get rid of the slightly less curves. Uh, there's less accidental touches, so that's a plus, but I just hope, I just prefer flat display all around. But I gotta say, display itself, 120 hertz, it's very fast, smooth, and if you use the OnePlus device before, you'll come to enjoy using this, especially with its design. Heading into performance, OnePlus has been really good with their software and their performance quality. It's top notch. It really is. My model has 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. And I think 16 gigs of RAM or at least 12 should be the standard in every single flagship smartphone. This is their flagship smartphone uh, right now. They don't have a OnePlus 11 Pro or like a OnePlus Ultra. This is at OnePlus 11 and it's good. It's buttery smooth. Now Oxygen OS, you can tell, it's not like how it used to be. It used to have like a stock Android look and feel. It has more of an Apple feel to it now, but I'll be honest, it doesn't bother me too much. I actually like the overall feel, the overall software uh, UI, it's good. I like it. It also is, uh, ships with Android 13 with a promise of four years of Android updates. And that's a great thing because more and more people, they're keeping their smartphones for longer. So it only makes sense to push out longer software updates. So OnePlus, I, I, good job, keep it up. Uh, four years is a great thing. Now, on my daily use, uh, I watch lots of YouTube videos, has no issue. Uh, I play Call of Duty as pretty much my only mobile game. Like I'll play uh, Pokemon uh, Go here and there, but that's not really too like uh, intensive. It's not an intensive game, so it doesn't use up a lot of battery or uh, power, but Call of Duty does, and it doesn't get warm to the touch at all, which I do like. This is a really good phone, especially if you want to use it for gaming. And if you go for the model with 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage like I do here, you really won't have any issue whatsoever. Like overall in my one month uh, long term of using this device, the performance uh, has been buttery smooth, no hiccups, no issues whatsoever. So OnePlus, if you ever come across this video, keep it up. That brings me into the camera. We're getting a triple camera setup and it's, it's good. It's not like the greatest camera setup, 
but it's good. The 50 megapixel camera, it does take good photos overall, especially in the day, and you'll be seeing some images on screen. Now, it's great to see a triple camera set up at this price point, and I'm gonna to get to price in a little bit. The one thing I'm curious is the Hasselblad partnership, it, I believe it was a three-year agreement, and I'm curious if they're going to continue it next year since they had that three-year agreement. Just something that um, I'm really curious about. But overall, it, it takes some good photos. Uh, video is also pretty decent. It's not gonna, you know, it's not any, wow, this was a really good, you know, camera setup and good camera quality, but it does get the job done. Now we're heading into battery, the battery life on the OnePlus 11. And as long as I've known the company, they've really been good at battery, uh, just overall the battery department. Now this comes equipped with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It doesn't have wireless charging, which makes me wonder, like OnePlus 10 Pro and OnePlus 9 Pro, they all had wireless charging. Uh, OnePlus 10T doesn't, and now OnePlus 11 doesn't, like they got rid of wireless charging. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna add a feature, just don't remove it the next year. I mean, there are those who really, really wanna purchase this device, but the, the breaking point is the fact that this doesn't come equipped with wireless charging. So, I mean, it's a good feature to have, and a lot of people are actually using wireless charging, uh, so why take it away? Maybe it's for uh, to bring down the costs and whatnot, but nonetheless, if you're adding a feature, I, I mean, just don't remove it. Nonetheless, uh, 80 watts of Super VOOC wired charging. This gives me a full charge from zero to 100 in nearly 30 minutes. And I'm getting seven hours plus of screen on time. And I, I believe that's thanks to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Uh, overall, devices that I've used with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 have been performing really good, especially in the battery department. OnePlus 11 is no exception. Like, I don't need to charge this at night, wake up in the morning, I'm getting ready for the day, plug it in, and I'm literally all set to go. In 30 minutes, this is from zero to 100, I am all set to go, and this will last me the entire day. So, battery is great. Just the fact that they got rid of wireless charging, that's just something, again, I'm nitpicking at, at this point, but don't remove a feature uh, if you add, unless it's something that's not really being used. And I think wireless charging for a lot of people are being used. Like it's not my most used feature, but knowing with the OnePlus 10 Pro last year, it had wireless charging. I was like, hey, this has wireless charging. If you know I'm taking my time, I can just put it on my wireless charger and I'm, I don't need to worry about both this. I've come across it a couple of times. I'm like, you know, let me put this on my wireless charger. And then I notice it doesn't charge. I'm like, oh yeah. I forgot, it doesn't have wireless charging. Now, aside, putting aside that whole wireless charging thing, it's great. Like the battery life itself is great. The charging speeds, it's great. Although 80 watts, that's also a downgrade from the OnePlus 10T, which had like 100 plus watts of wired charging. So I'm just trying to understand why they're making downgrades. If you want even faster charging, then you're probably gonna wanna go for OnePlus 10T. Overall, I'm really happy with the battery life. I think this is the best part of the phone itself. That's gonna lead me into price of the OnePlus 11, and I'm gonna put it right up here. 699 for 120 gigs of storage and eight gigs of RAM, and 799 for 256 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM. That's great, great pricing, especially for what you get. You're getting an amazing display, 120 hertz LTPO. Uh, you're getting some pretty decent cameras and a good camera setup itself. You're getting really fast charging. Uh, you're getting face unlock. You're getting uh, a in-display fingerprint sensor. You're getting overall a great device. This is not a pro, but you're getting those quote unquote pro features at a price that's that undercuts the Pixel 7 Pro and that's already a good device for $899. This pricing is really close to the Pixel 7 that's priced at $599. Now, I still think this device is directly competing with Pixel 7 Pro, uh, but it's it's good. Like $799 for 16 gigs of RAM, you can't find that in like the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Yes, the Ultra doesn't come with 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, they used to have it in the S20 Ultra 16 gig RAM model and they got rid of it. 
I don't know, I just, I like big numbers with devices. Like I like seeing a lot of RAM, a lot of storage. So I hope they bring that back. I mean, you're calling yourself an ultra device and you're not bringing the best of the best, like 16, 18 gigs of RAM, whatever. That's just my personal opinion. But for the price and for what you get, you really can't go wrong. I think that's one of the, uh, that's one of the strongest things about the OnePlus 11. They price this pretty good. My final thoughts about OnePlus 11. This may be the start of the return of OnePlus since the OnePlus 7 Pro. I absolutely, that was, that was my favorite device of all time, period. Absolutely loved it. And I still hold on to it. And I wish if I had more Android support, I probably would be using it because it still doesn't break a sweat. Now again, like I said, this is a phone to compare to the Pixel 7 Pro, as well as the Samsung Galaxy S23. It offers great specs and a user experience at a low cost compared to its competitors. And it's overall a great phone to recommend. And that was one plus years back. They were offering great specs and great experience uh, with a pretty decent camera uh, at a much, much lower cost when you're comparing it to its competitors and this is what we get if this was priced at 999 it would be a very difficult sell it would be a very difficult phone to recommend but at 699 even 799 for its top end model with 16 gigs of ram and 256 gigs of storage this is overall a great phone to recommend absolutely Love it. Again, if you want to check out my latest wallpaper pack, I'll be leaving a link in the description down below. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to superman that like button, comment down below, and best of all, share this video because it really does help out the channel a lot and will help push my content out to more people. That's been it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.